So it's basically a piece of cotton flannel, right? And it's actually quite large. It's shaped in an affinity sign because this you can use all over your body from for women they can use it on their breasts, men can use it on their chest, you can use it on your hips. Because castor oil is such a great anti-inflammatory. So if you have hip, mm-hmm. hip pain or you've hurt yourself. So if you hurt your neck, if you hurt your neck, you could literally put that castor oil on there and then wrap that around. You got it. Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode and I'm so excited. Today's guest is Dr. Marisol. She's a naturopathic doctor. She's the queen of thrones. She's a world leader in natural medicine and we're so excited that you're here. Welcome. Thank you so much. I am super thrilled to be joining this podcast today. Um, Well, I know you have a, your first book is about to drop, pun intended, yes. <laughs> and it's called O S H I T. I love that name. It's hysterical. It is. It's meant to really be a shocker, right? Because so so many of us out there are living with IBS or problems with our digestive tract, mm-hmm. and so many of us don't want to talk about it. But I just really want to bring it out there in the open. That's awesome. And and I know the book's just about like reducing anxiety and stress that irritate your bowels and so you can get like that natural rhythms and I will tell you I literally I love your show and I don't think enough people talk about it and I I don't think they're open enough about poop like it's kind of like taboo and they don't want to talk about it and You know, for me, literally, I have friends, so I go to a Bible study, and I have friends that remember that they literally, I would literally pray for me to poop. Like, they were like, oh, yeah, I remember. Remember when we used to pray that you would, like, poop because you hadn't pooped in two days? (laughs) <laughs> it's so true. You know, it's so common. I can't believe how common I see that in practice and people, you know, they complain. They're like, oh my God, why can't I go? Why can't I go? Right. And we don't understand like how important it is for our overall health. And we, we, you know, how everyone calls it your number two product. Uh, I actually, and my whole team, we all, we call it your number one product because it says everything about you. Right. And it really, really does. And there's, there's problems in your system, like whether it's anxiety or stress or low magnesium, low nutrients, you can discover a variety of different things just from learning how to analyze your, your stools, right? And we need to talk about it. Everyone needs to talk about it. And I always say, you know, uh, acquaintances talk about sex, but best friends, they talk about poop. Uh, that's so true. And you know what's funny is like, I literally, I look at my poop every single time I go. Like I get up, I like look at it, I analyze it. So I do it all the time. Now tell us about how did your passion for gut health begin? Like, is this something that you struggle with yourself personally? Um, I think, yeah, most not, not, most people who've gone down the realm of, of, of really yeah. focusing on something have had a personal experience with yeah. it. And for me, yeah. it started so early on with my mother actually being severely constipated and myself being constipated not really knowing it was constipation because a lot of people just aren't aware of what actually is constipation. And, you know, I just remember her us going on travels to Florida, you know, big vacations. And she'd always be like, I need to go to the grocery store because I need to go get like prunes and apricots and peaches. And, you know, she wanted plums to make her correr, right? Because I'm Spanish and in Spanish, that's the verb for to go to the bathroom, right? Mm-hmm. Sorry, my little uh, Lola is uh, making a little <laughs> barking down there. there. Um, but the, the, the key to it, hold on, the key to it was this, was that, um, you know, I was living that same life and I didn't feel well. I was overweight as a child. I had, you know, I was probably about 160 to 180 pounds by the time I was 12. I was like, you know, severely uh, depressed, unhappy, anxious. I had anxiety to the point where, you know, they, they, they classified it as asthma, but it wasn't asthma. It was just anxiety. And then, you know, nothing was done about it. You know, later on in my life, I I finally started to like adopt a few, uh, you know, good eating habits. I started cutting out things Then I started getting into my own body and my own life. But as I got older, I switched from constipation to extreme diarrhea. So it was like a, a back and forth. I'd either be constipated or then diarrhea. And it started really affecting my social life. Everything about my life was, was restricted because I would be, you know, where's the bath? Where's the nearest bathroom? Should I carry a spare pair of underwear everywhere? Where I go. So it was really, it was really impactful to my overall life and, and not the way that I wanted to live. So I went to specialist after specialist, like most people do. And, you know, they ended up concluding that I had an irritable bowel. And I said, sorry about that. You know, you could try removing foods, but, and I'd already been doing those things. I'd seen multiple naturopaths. 
And I just felt, you know, I think I actually have to go to school in order to like really, like, I think I've got to figure out the formula for myself. So that's what I did. I, it motivated me. The pain motivated me to change my life and to really, you know, if I, the dreams that I wanted when I was a child were I wanted to be Liza Minnelli and I wanted to be a doctor, right? So <laughs> this package is perfect. Um, what ended up happening was that I realized that I, I love talking about poop because it is my pain point in my life. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those topics that you either have to be incredibly serious about it or incredibly incredibly funny about it and so for yeah. me personality it's just perfect because I can joke about it you know we're Spanish we're very open about it in my family so it just it's a perfect fit and you know in my clinical practice it's incredible people uh maybe only 20 percent of people out there are diagnosable with an IBS but that's only the people who go to the doctors for it right because most of us go for a single complaint but most people any condition that they have there's problems with their gut as well too and they're just not expressing it because they don't think that that is the main problem yeah well i was looking at your website and you wrote a post called hyper wiper which is a hilarious name and you were talking about the hidden issue that hyper wiping reveals and i thought that was really interesting so tell us more about that yeah ironically hyper wiping is the very first question that i use to bridge the the topic of pooing in my practice with my patients so i always go so do you do you are you a hyper wiper and they're like what what is this lady talking about and i say you know do you wipe more than once when you go to the bathroom and they go oh like i don't know i i think more than once for sure and i go well that hyper wiping is actually a sign of mucus because it's a sticky a sticky poo um it's also a sign of potential food sensitivities allergies possible inflammation in your gut and dysbiosis, which is where you have a bad mix of bad bugs over the good bugs in our, in our gut bacteria. So people right then are like, oh my, I really have to start looking more and more uh, because it really is a huge problem. As a society, as people, what we should be doing is we should actually literally poo, wipe, and the paper should be completely clean and there should be no problems. Because if you look at indigenous, wow. yeah, yeah. indigenous cultures, they're eating the right foods for themselves, they're living in the right environment. And so when they go to the bathroom, they squat, they pop, and they walk away. And that should be what we're doing. So you can actually really assess the good and bad foods in your life by that one measure, hyper wiping, especially for many people. Like I've always said, you know, look at what you ate 24 hours before. And if there could be a correlation, then we can know slowly maybe start to like, you know, modify, not eat those foods as often and see what happens with your stools. Um, by the second patient visit with, with me, most patients actually have no more hyper wiping because we've done the first little steps to really get their gut to start to reset. Mm. So now do you um, recommend any kind of supplements? Like do you take any supplements yourself each day that kind of this really helps you? Yeah, absolutely. Like for me, it's a combination of life practices, diet, um, you know, timing of my meals. I know you're a huge fan of, of intermittent fasting, right? Yeah, yeah, I love it. I started that about three to four years ago, and it's just been such a, a, a wonderful thing for my life um, and for so many of my patients' lives because now pretty much every patient who walks in, they're, they're on an intermittent fasting protocol. Um, in terms of supplements, there's a few uh, very important basics that I do all the time, and this is often a recommendation to my patients is I start people off with probiotics and an alkalinizing formula in the a.m. and p.m. when they first wake up in the morning. Sometimes if these patients are having really, 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 or myself, if I'm having problems going to the bathroom, I'll add in an extra fiber supplement because I might not be getting it in my diet, especially when you're traveling a lot, right, along those lines. So we, I really love to recommend probiotics on an empty stomach. Um, for the purpose that I really want people to- Do you to have one that you really love? Um, so I were, I actually created my own supplements in my practice. So I work, tend to work with those ones. So mine is called gut toned and it's actually a formula that we've created and it is specific to the gut, but there's some, what you're looking for in a really good probiotic formula that I could recommend is that you really, especially if you have gut problems, avoiding things that have what's called FOSs, fructo oligosaccharides, because fructo oligosaccharides, those are actually called prebiotics. But for many people with an irritable bowel syndrome, if you take too much of that, them. For an example, you already get them in your food, but if you take a concentrated dose of them or get too many of them, then what can happen is it actually starts to overgrow bad bacteria and yeast and cause more fermentation and more problems for your gut. 
So I would say look for a probiotic that is free of fructo oligosaccharides. So it'll typically say on the label, and no, like FOSs, like they're, they won't be there on the label. That's really important. And certain strains, especially if you have an irritable bowel, problems with constipation, diarrhea, um, Infantis, Bifidobacteria infantis is very important on your probiotic because that is the initial populating in, uh, probiotic. So if you have that, um, it'll help to improve your population and your initializing of the gut bacteria. And I can't tell you how important it is to combine it with an alkalinizing formula. Alkalinizing formula, calcium, magnesium, potassium, you'll see those things. Ideally, it has a little bit of uh, uh, vitamin C. Uh, DFH has a really great formula called electrolyte synergy, which I use quite a bit in my practice, or Alka practice is our, our version of it. I just got a couple more different things in it. Um, but it's got vitamin C in it. It'll have calcium, magnesium, potassium. So it'll help to alkalinize the body improve your electrolyte mix which is excellent which is what you want because you know the gut is based on electrolyte balance and then it'll also calm you down because the magnesium and help you go to the bathroom too so and when you take probiotics with an alkalinizing supplement on an empty stomach you improve your intake of the actual probiotic and the sticky factor i like to say of getting those good bu gut bugs Gotcha. And so I went on your website and I was looking and I, I went to the store and it said our online store is currently under construction. Please send an yeah. email to, and then it, it has another website that's sanus.ca. So is that where you kind of partner with Sanus to create those different, uh, yes. things that you yeah. love? Yeah, so Samus is my clinical practice, and, and over my 10 years of practice, I basically, you know, refined the formulas uh, for our supplements because I've, I've, I've seen so much, right? And it's ironic, what happened with my supplements, I actually created them initially for children because so many children are cesarean-born, right? And so they lack, when you're cesarean-born, you lack the initial, you know, you know, inoculation of good gut bacteria. And so a lot of cesarean-born children will have allergy problems with their digestive tract. They'll have constipation. You know, it, I was a cesarean born, born child, same thing, right? So, so you see that pattern. And so from the patterns I saw in practice, I just started to develop the supplements. We actually have our online cart starting very shortly. So it'll be up and running very soon. And people will see the different things that we recommend. Um, but what is the most ironic thing is most often than not, I don't go to supplements first. I actually go to something called a castor oil pack. Because a lot of the issue is that for me, myself, like how I was, is that I was taking the right supplements, I was doing the exercise, I was eating the right diet, and but there was something that was missing that wasn't letting me have that good balance in my gut. And what I realized was for me and for so many of my patients, it was our imbalance in stress. Was that we are constantly, right? We're running on like like you know, octane, high octane, gasoline, 24-7. It's like we're living like we're living in Jurassic Park, you know, running away from the, the Tyrannosaurus Rex all the time. The thing with that is that when your system is in overdrive consistently and you don't have good balance of moving it into the relaxed state, you actually end up uh, not being able to go to the bathroom because all your blood flow is going out to your extremities, up to your brain, because you're trying to run away from a predator. So the blood flow is not going to the digestive tract to help your body be able to do the job it's supposed to do to package and, and eliminate. So that is the huge, that's explain. So explain how the, the castor oil pack works. Yes. Yeah. So you're actually from Virginia beach, which is awesome. And like Virginia beach is the origination of the castor oil pack here in North America, um, which is uh, amazing. Uh, so the castor oil pack, castor oil, first of all, is one of the most unique uh, vegetable oils that exist. Um, it falls out of fame for many reasons, because of course it's a little bit messy and it's a little bit sticky. And the castor oil packs were exactly that messy and sticky before, but we made it really easy to do. But they do five very specific things. Uh, number one, they get your bowels moving. Um, and this is because castor oil actually mimics the human body's uh, uh, little uh, messenger called PGE3. This messenger- So hold on, so explain to me, so like, um, 
you know, when I was pregnant, I actually gave birth to my son like three weeks early because I was like, this is so, I threw up when I was pregnant, I threw up every single day. I was, I was the worst pregnant woman. I threw up like six times a day, every day, even to the time that I gave birth. And I was like, I am so done with this. So I did like CrossFit that morning. I literally did. I like took castor oil. You know how you like find all these things. So I literally took like spoonfuls of castor oil and then I like my water broke and then I ended up having them. So when you say a castor oil pack, is this, mm -hmm. explain what it looks like. Yeah, so castor oil pack, I'll, I'll, as an example, I'll show you what we've got here. So this is um, my castor oil pack, which is like, it's a cotton flannel, layers of cotton flannel that you're gonna be placing on top of the liver area of your body. And mm -hmm. yeah, what this does, castor oil, it being the most unique oil, you place the oil on the, on the cotton flannel and then you attach it onto the body. Yeah. Castor oil, yeah, it's, it's really neat because you can take castor oil orally like you did. And what that does is that's a strong mover of the bowels and of the uterus. So any of the smooth muscle in the body. But a castor oil pack is more regulatory for the system. So it starts getting the bowels moving. Or if you have the other opposite extreme where you're going too much, it starts to calm them down and relax them. So castor oil is the only oil that can go underneath of the dermis, which is the first level of skin. You can't achieve this with uh, coconut oil, sesame oil, and none of the other oils because they don't have the right molecular weight. One of the components of castor oil really helps to bring it down deep into the tissue so it gets into the circulation and it gets into the gut from the outside in. So that helps you avoid, because as you know, castor oil isn't the most delicious flavor. <laughs> Although you probably miss so it. So what, is your, what is your opinion on like getting castor oil and like massaging it on your stomach? Like literally, like if you got a massage, because I do, one of the things I'm kind of, you know, everyone spends money on different things. Yes. And for me, mine is massage. Like I would rather like spend it, if I had my choice, like my one, one of my best friends, she'd rather go buy a shirt. And I'm like, I'd rather wear the same shirt I'm wearing, but get me a massage. Yeah, so, yeah, but I what do you that, think like, about that. getting the, taking castor oil and actually put, massaging it on your liver, on your gallbladder, on your stomach? I love it. It's also one of the ways that it works. It works a little bit better with the actual pack because you have a, an entire uh, stimulation of the nervous system effect. But because you're getting a strong massage, that'll that'll help to play a role in that. Um, the it, it's beneficial because it goes deep into the skin, right? So the pack, the the change that the pack does is about fifty percent of the treatment. Is that because it's localized in one area, it keeps the nervous system in that area in the relaxed state because it's stimulating all. All the skin but you get a similar effect if you're having a deep massage right so you'd have you'd want so to show everyone back. and if you're if you're listening to this on podcast we will have this on YouTube as well so if you search this um, go to our our show and subscribe to Chantel Rayway you'll be able to show it so show everyone one more time that that pack and um, yeah. what that looks so like. it's basically a piece of cotton flannel right and it's actually quite large it's shaped in an affinity sign because this you can use all over your body. From For women, they can use it on their breasts. Men can use it on their chest. You can use it on your hips. Because castor oil is such a great anti-inflammatory. So if you have hip, mm -hmm. hip pain or you've hurt yourself. So if you hurt your neck, if you hurt your neck, you could literally put that castor oil on there and then wrap that around. You got it. Or if you're you're really tense in your shoulders consistently. Like I remember being in naturopathic college and just over, hunching over my, my, my work all the time. So, or people at desks do this all the time. I would just put it on my shoulders and I would wear the pack like while I was watching TV at night, just kind of relaxing. So, so are you putting the castor oil on the outside of that pack and how much castor oil are you using? So not very much. I'm actually only using about two to four tablespoons, more of the first times that you use the pack because you actually keep on reusing the pack. So I would pour castor oil, two to four tablespoons. I would basically blot it. And then what I would do is I would take it and I would place it straight on my liver, which is under on your right side of your body. And then I would attach it. And then I would just go to sleep or I would, uh, some patients I say, you know, go make your dinner and wear your pack while you're eating your dinner. There's, when I travel, I wear them at night. When I'm at home, I often wear them during the daytime because they're very relaxing. So then I tend to be more effective at my work and, and what I'm doing and creativity and such. So castor oil packs really, they're easy to do now because before they used to be about 12 steps. So what I did is I saw that patients wouldn't do the packs with the old recommendation of how to do a castor oil pack. So I created this to help 
patient student for myself to be able to do it. And so why, why is, why would someone use this castor oil pack versus just taking the castor oil, putting it on a piece of cloth and putting it on there? What are the benefits? This messiness, well, less messiness, right? So, and two steps because you often two times often want to add heat as well too with this pack. It's very, it's almost like an insulating pack. So you don't need to add heat. You can walk around with it. A lot of us don't, like when I first started doing my castor oil packs and I, my, I first created the, the castor oil pack, what I realized was that I, I wasn't the type of person who had time to lie down there and sit for an hour and like relax and meditate. It wasn't, it wasn't my practice back then. Um, and this actually ended up becoming my gateway to, you know, putting it on my body. When I put it on my body, you actually feel a sensation of relaxation. And that is what happens because of the packing of it. Uh, it's no different than when you have an injury, you, you pack an area, you pack an area so that the body can bring blood flow, can, you know, do the activity in the area. So that's the real, that's the, the big reason why to do it. And to be able to have the mobility and to be able to like uh, set yourself up in baby steps to learn how to relax. Because we don't, we as a society, we are out of the practice of relaxation. We don't know how to do it, and so for us to get into it, that's a castro pack like this that attaches onto your body is super great. We actually use it in practice to teach people how to meditate, to just sit there and calm. Wow, yeah, and I think that's why, like I said, you know, why I feel like the that massage that I get it two times a week yeah. is truly because of that. I don't, I'm, you know, people say to me all the time, Chantel, you don't know how to relax. You just go, yeah. go, go. And that is the time that I truly do kind of really relax. So I love that. So I know that yeah. you offer a Fit for a Queen course and, um, you know, people can sign up for that. Uh, give us one hint, uh, give us one tip that you share in the Fit for a Queen course that listeners can come to expect. Absolutely. So the one tip in Fit for a Queen, I probably have to say that castor oil packs, you want to do them as a practice and they're, and daily if possible. I travel with it. I go everywhere with it. Castor oil packs in my practice was a missing link for the majority of my patients. I would put them in a cleanse. You know, they'd be spending thousands of dollars getting IV therapy, colon under therapy, taking a boatload of supplements. They'd be doing all those things. Yeah. And then I wouldn't see the results at the end of the month. And I would ask them. And the one question I'd always ask them was, did you do your castor oil pack? And they're like, no. I thought it was irrelevant. And I go, well, we're going to have to do the cleanse again. And we actually did a study in our clinic comparing two groups of patients in a cleanse. And we took laboratory measures to see the difference pre and post. You know, liver enzymes will go down. Cholesterol will go down. A bunch of markers for the digestive tract will go down. And the group that did the castor oil packs of the cleanse compared to the group that didn't do the castor oil packs had a much bigger improvement overall. And so I've seen that time and time again in my practice. And, and what I've realized is that, you know, castor oil packs, they they help you absorb your food better. They help you absorb your supplements better. They get your gut to not be so leaky. So the foods that you're eating, you're not alert, you're not as allergic to them. You know, so it, it has such a massive, uh, widespread effect that to do a pack every single day is probably the best recommendation I can give any single patient. And that's why it's part of my mission. Yeah, yeah, because they're, they, you know, they're legendary. They've been around forever. They, there's, there's practice of them being used in ancient China in Ayurvedic medicine, uh, Egyptian used castor oil, Mediterranean basin, um, uh, anyone who's Indian, uh, any of the islands, they all use castor oil. And the reason for it is because it just does so much good stuff. Yeah. That's and, awesome. And now, well, yeah, go ahead. This is the, I think you'll love this. It's actually uh, one of the anointing oils in the Bible. Uh, castor oil is also, its other name is Palm of Christ. So mm. it's, yeah, it's a, he a very, very healing oil. And the plant itself, the neatest thing about it is that the bean actually has the potential to kill. So it can heal you, but it can kill you. The bean, it, which is the protein part, which is not in the oil, so people don't have to be worried about this if they they're using the oil, is actually used as biological warfare. So I think it's the most perfect example of yin and yang, the, the balance that we have in nature, you know, light and darkness, all those things. So it really is. And they say that castor oil, like, uh, like frankincense oil, one of the oils that was brought from the Three Kings, is an oil that is very connecting to the source, to God. Well, that is awesome. Yeah. So yeah. before we start with listener questions, you know, we talk a lot about intermittent fasting diet on this podcast, and I always like to ask my guests about a day in their life of like, 
when do you eat? What kind of foods do you eat? When do you eat them? Are there any foods that you avoid? You know, is there anything that you go, you know, every day I make sure I eat X, Y, Z. So talk to us about the day in the life of your eating. Awesome. Awesome. So I wake up, I typically go to yoga in the morning between uh, six to seven hot yoga because I like to sweat all the stuff out of my body. I think people don't realize, you know, the days that I do that kind of sweating, I, I, I don't love hot yoga, but I do it because I know how good it is for my body. But I do also like to get in a sauna. And the days that I get in the sauna and sweat it out, I just feel like, 10 million times better and I think that makes you I think that sweating helps you poop too don't you it sure does because when you sweat and you move the fluids around your body you're actually you're you're doing good flow which is what your system needs biggest problem is people don't have good flow between the different compartments of their system like their gut and then the outside tissues and then the cells so sweating gets things moving and gets things mo- like out of the body castor oil packs during saunas are excellent and there's many uh detox retreats and centers that actually practice, do that. So that's something that you can add into your into your little practice. I oftentimes will take the castor oil pack and go run for a little bit. If I don't go to yoga, I'll do a 10-minute a intensive interval, like running break, running break, running break, kind of like a Tabata-based or intensity training, interval training. Um, and then I'll, I'll wear my castor oil pack because I'm at home and I want to just enhance everything. Uh, I, bet I, and I start my morning with, again, like I said, those supplements that I take plus green tea. Green tea is a, a, a major component of helping to improve the gut lining uh, over coffee, plus green tea before exercise actually helps to improve your exercise effect. So that's what we want. I fast till about, uh, I'd say 11 or 12, depends on the day. And then I'll eat over an eight hour period. So before that I was having green tea, water, sometimes I'll do a little bit of lemon water just for a little bit of a change up. Um, And that's very good for the bowels as well, too. My first meal uh, typically consists of a protein, uh, whether it's salmon, chicken, beef. I try to stay away from pork. Um, Pork just very similar to human tissue. And so for many people, it can cause a a reactivity to it. But it also is the meat that takes the longest to actually digest. So fish and fowl, fish is the least, it's about an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, Fowl is typically around three hours and uh, beef is about four to five and and, uh, uh, pork is actually like seven to eight hours to digest. So it's really heavy on the intestinal tract. Lots and lots of vegetables, whether raw or cooked. I love my salads, you know, they're easy to do. I pre-make them oftentimes on on the weekend. Uh, or cooked vegetables, depending on how I feel. I'm in Canada, so it's cold now. So we're like, we're, and it might be cold in Virginia Beach too. I'm not sure how you're doing there. Um, but I love to do a little bit more warming food when it's winter time. And then uh, the eight hours, I give myself leeway. I either will snack or eat, depending on how hungry I am. Uh, I know I metabolize quickly because my gut is working so well. Um, I am uh, truly like a, a in and out. It's fantastic. Like I've, I've gotten my system to be very finely tweaked at this point in my life. And unless I, I go off of track, like all of us. Do you do any like food combining where you're kind of eating yeah. vegetables with, with um like meats and not eating any kind of like carbs with that makes the biggest difference when you are doing food combining it's so huge i always tell my patients the number one thing with food combining is stay away from fruit and protein especially if you have gut problems because fruit and protein uh protein requires stomach acid and fruit requires alkalinized alkalinized environment. So what ends up happening is that you take the protein with the fruit. So say like a mango chicken salad, right? Extra mango. So you eat that mango with the 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 chicken and what ends up happening is that you you'll start to ferment the fruit in your gut. And that fermentation byproduct makes you feel bad, makes you feel foggy or fuzzy in your brain. And it also creates bad bacteria overgrowth. So I would say my biggest thing with food combining is try to keep away, always keep away as much as possible you know, on occasion, but from the fruit and the protein. I tend to recommend if you're going to be eating starches, especially if you're uh, working towards weight loss, you have those starches on their own, like between your meals, right? So if you're, if you're doing intermittent fasting, you're really craving a baked potato, have a baked potato, but on its own. Whenever you combine carbohydrates with fats, you actually increase your fat uh, intake and in terms of fat storage. 
So always trying to avoid doing the carbohydrates like pastas with a lot of fat. But a lot of our, the reason why, you know, obesity is an epidemic is because a lot of the food, our common foods are all that. They're all carbo- heavy carbohydrates and starches with fat. And then we eat that all day long and we forget about our vegetables, right? Yeah. 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 So how much, is there anything like vegetable wise that you say, you know, every day I eat this, this, and this. I mean, my husband and I just got back from a trip and we were um, in Miami and they there was this restaurant that had this like fresh baby kale salad and it was like to die for. And I was eating that like every day I was there and like even twice a meal, I was eating like kale salad. And I just, I literally like felt like a million bucks. And I almost felt like, like that kale was like, just cleaning my system out and I mean between the sun um yeah. you know I just I he was like gosh Chantal you are just like you know tons yeah. of energy yeah. yes well, that's the thing you know when you're loaded in your gut you're you're loaded in your mind and you're fuzzy and foggy and not feeling well and overall just 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 not good right um, my, it's exactly that group of family of vegetables that I make sure that I eat every single day, which is the brassica family of vegetables, the broccoli, the cabbage, the kale, the Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts. Um, we the did. Card. Those are my staples because those, especially for women, um, whether whatever stage of life you're in, whether you're transitioning to menopause, whether you're the prime of your life, whatever it may be. Um, these foods are so good to help balance out our hormones, to help provide amazing fiber to our systems. So I make sure I always eat those. I often, try, I always try to get as much as I can at the grocery store arugula because arugula is a bitter vegetable and bitter vegetables are the best to get your bile moving, which stimulates your, your bowels moving. And then beets. I can't tell you for a starchy vegetable, how important beets are in our diets. So I, every weekend, every make a massive cauldron. Like my, if I'm not around, my husband makes it for me. So he's so well-trained. He's a great husband. He'll make a massive pot of beets for me and he'll eat them as well. Uh, but I put, always put them in my salads. I put them on meals. Uh, beets are amazing soluble fiber. So they really keep the gut regular. They're healing for the gut. And they have a bunch of detoxification components that will help your livers keep you clean and keep your hormones all in balance as well too, which for us, you know, as women, we're over, our hormones really are out of whack for many of us. And it's because of our diets, because us, us not going to the bathroom properly. So this really helps to rebalance all those things out. So those yeah. Factors. And the, the thing is, is that, you know, I've heard people say, you know, well, I don't like beets. And I would have told you several years ago that I didn't like beets because I was thinking of canned beets. Yeah, but then I went to like a fan, enough. they're disgusting. Yeah, and I went yeah, to a yeah, restaurant right. and had like this amazing like beet salad that I just like tasted. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is out of this world, but it's something you've got to have fresh roasted beets. Otherwise it is disgusting. And so if you've, if you've kind of like me had in your mindset, oh, I don't like beets. Well, you're probably talking about canned beets, which I think are disgusting as well. Absolutely. And you know, just bo- like try just boiling beets, take off the skin, boil the beets, cut them up, put them in a delicious, uh, one of your favorite salads. And I find that's a really easy gateway to kind of start to eat, uh, eat salads. And we use beets a lot actually to test people's transit time. So how long it takes them to go to the bathroom. So this is the, the, probably the first. Let's talk about, let's talk about that for just a second. Um, let's talk about with it, yeah. beets because so honestly, when I eat beets, um, that is one thing that is a little bit disturbing is when I have beets, my um, urine ends up being pink and my poop is like bright red. Is it the same for you and is that okay? That's awesome. That's actually what we're looking for because the, the bright red color of foods typically means that it's cleaning the blood and it's healing, right? Red is a, a healing color. Um, and that's doing that within the gut. And we actually want all those because those are also polyphenols. They're, they're antioxidants, so they're good for the gut. We use it as a transit test to see how long it takes your food to come in and out of your body. And we always warn patients about their pee going red because everyone gets worried that I'm bleeding and it's a problem and then I'm bleeding from my intestines. So as long as you know that you've eaten eat, uh, beets, you're good usually. And it depends on your transit time, whether it's a 24-hour period or a 36-hour period. So what, what is that time? So like from the time that I eat those beets, yeah. what, when should I be like 
peeing red or pooping red? Would it be right away or it takes Peeing can be long? right away. Yeah, it can be within two to three hours. It's really rapid, right? Because you absorb it and it goes straight to the kidneys. But the stool, that's where you want to see because that'll tell you whether you're more on the line of constipation or diarrhea or you're right in the middle and you're perfect. So the ideal is 24 hours. So all the food, fiber, and fluids that you ate the day before within a 24-hour period. And it's typically a so pretty long in 24 hours or at the 24-hour mark? With, like, ideally within, tw- I mean, nothing in medicine is ever, like, home perfect, but it's somewhere within the 24 hours, you know, give or take a little bit. If it's, you know, under six hours or 12 hours, that's, that's very fast transit time. So your body's, like, super fast metabolizing and getting things out. As long as you don't have diarrhea symptoms, and that could be okay for you, right? Because, you know, some people and just have really... when you do the food combining, yeah. it goes through your system so much faster. Yeah, and the reason is you're not making glue, right? Like dairy and wheat. Like you could make skid, a kid's school glue um, by combining wheat, dairy, uh, vinegar, and baking soda. And vinegar and baking soda are like stomach acid vinegar. Baking soda comes from the pancreas. You make yeah, actual like glue that. in your gut. Oh, it's it's super cool. I just did a segment on a, a national TV Ooh. show here in Canada on glue in the gut. And it's just like, it's a, a, incredible. Like it's non-toxic school glue. Uh, because it it's made of flour, you know, milk, vinegar, and baking soda, and wow. yeah, like so that's what you create in your gut, and that's it, the the principle of it is that is it just slows things down, and then you don't go to the bathroom well. But if you food combine, put those separately, right? The dairy separately, you know. I I'm not a huge component of dairy. I often tell people to avoid dairy. I don't feel we should be. Yeah. I, unfortunately, yeah. I I love dairy, but I the two things Me I too. completely take out of my diet. Diet is dairy and wheat. Those are the two pieces. But the Great. thing is, you got to get excited about what you. I always say this: you got to get excited about what you can have, instead right. of like, like I went. I went on this trip to um, Miami that I just got back from. I didn't eat a d- d- ounce of dairy and an ounce of wheat, but I had the most amazing food ever. I mean, it was like delicious to die for. Hey guys, we absolutely love getting your questions into the podcast, but we're also interested in your journey. So if you've started intermittent fasting and have some success or even struggling a little bit, we want to hear about it. Email me your intermittent fasting stories to Chantel at ChantelRayWay.com. Now back to the show. All right, well, let's jump right into the questions. This first one is Joanne in Virginia Beach. My friend got something called the Squatty Potty. It's a stool that sits around your toilet and lifts up lifts up your knees so you're sitting like a caveman when you poop. She said this is the way nature intended us to poop, LOL. I have never heard of this before and what is the truth behind it? Do you agree with it? Joanne and Virginia true. Beach. That's true, yes. I yes, have very one. True. The thing is, you don't even really need a squatty potty. You actually can do it in a couple of different ways. I always teach patients. What happens is this, is that our toilets are on a 90 degree angle. Uh, and the problem with a 90 degree angle, and you can actually test this out by doing like a, a squat against the wall where you keep your body and put yourself into a chair. When you put yourself into a chair like that, your, your lower uh, pelvic floor is all tight. Right? How on earth are you going to be able to squeeze uh, poo out? And the other thing is that the sphincter closes up, right? Because you're completely tight. When you go like this, what happens? So from here to here, this opens up the lower sphincter and then everything can come out of the body. So this is your like your knees up here, right? So there, the three ways that I tell people to do it to position for success is this. Um, you can get a squatty potty or a stool. Any, any stool will do a little small children's stool. Um, I really, you can use your reading material that you have in the bathroom, right? That's one way to do it. Or what I like to call poo pumps. So your favorite high heel shoes that are as high, the higher the better, you put them underneath of you and that actually works perfectly to just put you in the right position. So you can use poo pumps too. You can sell that next. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It's actually... It's actually part of my, my, I love, I love, I love to, uh, t- t- tools to teach people about their poo. So poo pumps are a great way to do it. And that's, that's an awesome way. And the one last thing you can do too, if, you, if you're like out nowhere and you don't have the option, is to just lean forward as much as you can onto your, onto your knees. And you know, people, I used to do this as a kid naturally, right? Because I was like, I, like I, I felt confident and I couldn't go to the bathroom. And if you're having problems going to the bathroom, you'll find like when you're having a belly ache and you feel you got to go, like you'll go, you'll lean forward, right? Because your body trying to get it out so it's just a natural instinct in our system awesome all right this next one is from natalie in alabama 
I've tried everything natural to help me go. And it seems like everything works for a short amount of time. And then all of a sudden it stops working. I've tried Senna Tea, Aloe Lax, Smooth Move, just to name a few. Why is it that they seem to work and then all of a sudden stop? And do you have any recommendations for something else to either drink or take as, an, as a supplement to help me go? Awesome. So yeah. if this, is, this is the most common thing that I see actually in my, in my clinical practice. And I don't know about her specific case, but for most people, this is how it goes. Is that they're taking, she's taking the right things. And each time that she takes a supplement, she introduces something new. So the body has a period that it has to adjust. And it'll work. And then over time, you know, her she, like her levels of things change. The bo- balance in her body isn't working as optimal. The, the the key to this is this is where the castor oil packs come and play a role in because her issue more than anything, not that she needs more as a supplement, is that she needs to command her stress more than anything. So her balance of rest and 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 and, and stress is heavy duty into the stress phase. So then her bathroom time is always going to be a trouble. So she needs to do retraining of her stress system and using the castor oil pack will help. Plus the castor oil pack will help with getting those bowels to move on a regular basis. So those, that's a perfect. A lot package. of our, a lot of our guests uh, do like one thing that they'd like to give away. And we post it on our Facebook page if they share and like it. Do you want to give away one of those castor oil packs? Absolutely. Okay, I that was totally love great. to do that. Yeah, I'll give away okay. two. Let's do two. Actually, three because okay. that's a good number. The Holy Trinity. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna give away three to the lucky yeah. people. Share and like and comment on the post, and um, that would be awesome. All right, awesome. next question. This is from anonymous. It's funny that all of our poop questions are anonymous, right? Um, She says, I listened to your podcast about floating poop, and I went to my doctor, and he said that floating poop isn't that big of a deal. It was thought to be for a little while, but that's a less popular idea now. He said it has to do with the amount of fat that you are eating, but I shouldn't be concerned. By the way, this was a general doctor, not a specialist. I feel like I'm just getting mixed messages about this because after your podcast, I got the idea that it was a bad thing. I've been reading online a lot of stuff that talks about the foods that we eat that cause gas that makes the floating poop. I was surprised because some healthy things that were listed were apples, honey, and prunes. What is the deal? Is it good or bad or doesn't matter? Anonymous. Awesome. Awesome. Great question. Um, So good and bad is probably the words we got to watch there because, um, you know, our body's a system and systems aren't, you know, perfect or not perfect, right? So it's like there's a there's a, a flow. The doctor is correct. There's partly a, a, a component that it does have to do with the fat that you're consuming. The, the reason why, and there is also a component of uh, different foods that contain high fructans that will cause gas and, and make the, the poo also float. The fat is the main one you want to watch because fat is so absolutely important uh, to our lives. Um, in, in the food little conversation we had earlier about the thing I eat every single day, it's a lot of oil, a lot of olive oil, a lot of avocado oil, coconut oil. Um, I would add that to, to the mix because oil. What about hemp seed oil? What is your thoughts on I love hemp seed oil too. Yeah, that's another one that I'll eat there. I always find those are a little t- harder to find sometimes, but I love hemp seed oil. I love changing up my oils. I'm definitely a big fan of olive oil every single day and most often a lot of times coconut oil too. Um, and then avocado and I'll go walnut. I'll do hemp oil. I'll do a little bit of flax oil. I'm good with all of those oils. Oils are what brings things into our body and takes things out of our body. It's why castor oil works to, for what it's doing. It's helping you to absorb things and it's helping you to eliminate things out of your system. And that just has so many more activities. Oil keeps us young. Oil is the base product of our hormones. We need oils and we need to be absorbing them properly. So if you're having those floating poos, what you want to do is you actually want to start watching, watching and tracking. Like when are you, when are your stools floating? Because women, women usually age 35 to to 55 white women, this is like a stat that is done in the medical literature, uh, tend to have a lot of problems with their gallbladder. And they're the most common population that end up getting their gallbladders removed. And the gallbladder is what helps you to absorb your fats in a, on a daily basis. And plus, you also need fats to have beautiful skin. So this is very important, especially as we age, right? We want to keep our, our youth and our vitality as long as we possibly can. So, for, so if you're consistently having floating stools, then there could potentially be an issue with your ability to absorb the fat in your diet. And that, especially if you're not consuming a lot of fat in your diet. But, you know, if you're having the occasional floating stools, but, you know, one day I, 
over poured, you know, olive oil, or I just ate oil like all day long. It was every single meal was really, really heavy duty and fats and oil. And then I had floating stools. Okay. Then that, you know, that, that you would think obviously because you're eating a quantity that's outside of your normal. So you want to watch and track what is happening over time. Are you consistently having those floating stools? And then if you are, then what you want to be doing is typically castor oil packs to help you absorb things better. And then also you can do a digestive enzyme in combination. And you want to be looking for a digestive enzyme that contains bile. Because bile salts, that is what helps you to absorb your fats. And so that then you would be combining those two, those two treatments. Yeah, so, great question. Yeah. And there so are always controversy too. Talk about talk about bile for just a little bit and talk about those bile salts that you were talking about. So is that all through a supplement that you suggest or do you feel like that's something that people like, you know, they should take like a bile builder or what is your opinion on that? Great question. So we actually create our own bile through the ha- having a healthy diet and there's two types of biles. There's healthy bile and sick bile. So when you're eating processed foods, all the bad foods, you know, sugar, alcohol all the time, and that's your consistent diet, McDonald's or what have you, like you go eat your fast food junkie, um, you tend to have bad unhealthy bile and the bile doesn't serve you a, a healthy purpose in your body. It actually helps to promote bad gut bacteria. If you're eating really healthy vegetables, all the good stuff, um, you actually have healthy bile and healthy bile actually stimulates your gut movements and also helps you absorb your fats, but it also heals the gut lining like nothing else does. Like bile is super important for the human system. The reason why we like castor oil packs is castor oil packs help you to stimulate and increase your bile production naturally, which is great, right? Because whatever you do, you want to try to do it naturally. You don't always want to have to be taking a supplement. Um, bile salt in a supplement will help to give you added bile salt while you're trying, you're working on improving your natural ability to create more bile and to be able to like add that to your system. So that's a big problem for people. And again, like I said, like women within the ages of 35 to, you know, anywhere between 45 to 55, that white woman category, they really have problems problems with bile salts and how, and typically they'll be have those gallbladder problems right awesome okay angela in myrtle beach i want to have a stool test done to see what's going on and find out if my liver and gut are normal what is the best kit i could buy to help me dive into those issues but won't cost me an arm and a leg something that is reliable also can you just do a blood test for this or is stool better angela in myrtle beach Great, great question, Angela. I love that. Um, so stool tests are not my first go-to. Isn't that funny? And I'm a, a, a gut, digestive health expert. Yes. yes. They're actually the last thing on my list. And unfortunately, Angela, we're not going to be able to get, there won't be one that is a, a, a won't be cost an arm and a leg because they do run quite expensive anywhere. You know, I think the least I've seen is 400 to like 600, 700, depending on how intensive you want to be have it. My my recipe is if you are understanding your stools and you wash them and you look at them, um, we're launching shortly what's called Know Your Poo. And this Know Your Poo is basically like a, an, an, uh, a little ebook that tells you about all the different types of the 11 measures of your poo and what's a perfect poo and what's a, a poo that you got to work on. Uh, it's more important, in my opinion, that for you to understand what your poo is telling you uh, than necessarily that stool test. And I might get, you know, some backlash for that, but that, that's my opinion. There's actually conventional labs that will serve as a better way uh, to understand what's going on with your stools. Um, like you can look at things like urea uh, is a sign of dysbiosis so you, and uric acid. So you know how people, when they have gout, they have elevated levels of uric acid. Uh, gout is actually a very severe un- unbalance of the gut uh, microbes in the body. So that's one way to look at what's going on. Um, and there's other measures in your labs, but the best way is to really see what's coming out of your body and out of your stools. The exception to that would be like a hydrogen breath test for SIBO. Um, if you've got like small intestine uh, bacterial overgrowth, right? That is one test that can be done. But I would almost start to do things like get your food out sensitivities tested because then you can start to take action on them right away right you can re- you can you can take remove those foods out of your diet for a period of time see what happens on your bowels that's a more beneficial uh in my opinion a beneficial lab to do when you're having uh, gut health issues because then you can take those foods out and you can act on it right away the stool test is okay but I, in my opinion i think you could do a lot better with understanding your stools and doing a food sensitivity test instead All right, this next one's from Courtney in Fluvana, which I have no idea where Fluvana is, but she says, 
I have this problem where every time I'm in the car or in the airplane, somewhere that I know it's really inconvenient to go to the bathroom, I have to go. I even if I'm driving to church or work locally, I have to leave 15 minutes early just in case I have to stop at a gas station and go to the bathroom. What is my problem and how do I get back to living my life? Courtney in Fluvana. Yes. It sounds like Courtney may be suffering. This is the type of patient who would be suffering from like an irritable bowel, the diarrhea type, right? Or probably she might have some alternating uh, back and forth, right? I don't know her patient case specifically, but that's what it, that's what it sounds like. Um, what's interesting with this is I suffered from this quite a lot in my life in my in my in my, as I got older, um, and what I realized was that the the main thing with this is that it is definitely based on your levels of stress. So you're going into these new environments, you're leaving your home. You know, you're you're typically this the balance between stressed and 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 relaxed isn't 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 well balanced. So the most important thing is for her to learn how to do you know stress reduction techniques. And this is a case where castor oil packs help to regulate and, and improve your ability to get into a good relaxed state quickly. And I would be doing exercise. So she's going to have to look at her entire lifestyle practice to really get this uh, tuned in uh, and keyed in. But uh, really things that are going to help her to relax are going to be the very best thing, like creating mantras, having gratitude practices, perhaps before she leaves the house, you know, maybe doing a castor oil pack before you leave the house like and, and trying that, you know, at home first and seeing the effect that it has with her. But this is stress really affects our bowel function. Like there is no two ways about it. Um, patients like her typically might have anxiety or, you know, depression or alternating of those things. So those are the, that's what you want to be watching for. But stress plays a huge role in our, in our bowel health. All right. This is our last question. This is from Jennifer in New Hampshire. Do you think CBD oil helps with constipation? It's been helping me with pain and joints, but does it help or hurt with constipation? I there, there so the research is really lacking in this area, and I'm, I don't quite use it for constipation at all, um, or or in, for gut health for that matter. Um, just because you know there's so many other tools that you can use um, before you go, you go down that way. I don't think that there would be a problem with it hurting. There's a or or or, or being better. like I'm sure it's a little bit both ways because there are the thing with the gut is the gut is the hub for uh, the hormonal system, the nervous system, and the immune system. So um, what CBD oil stimulates is, is, is uh, cofactors from the, the, the nervous system. So they're likely very high in the gut. So there could be a potential that it could help or could not help. So that, that I can't comment on too much, but you know, with everything, see what happens. You got to try it out and see if she's feeling her pain, like what's going on with her bowels and start to watch her poo. Yeah. Like, right. Cause then she'll, she'll get a good idea. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. And when can we expect your book to come out? Yes. So O-S-H-I-T is <laughs> launching is launching in the fall. So we'll be having launching that the first weeks of October. Yeah, we're really excited. Maybe you can come back on the show. You'll come back on the show right before it launches so we can have another one. This was absolutely amazing. And thank you for being so generous and giving away those three castor oil packs. I cannot wait to get mine. I'm going to do it right away. And um, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm so excited. Well, if you have a question that you want answered, go to questions at ChantelRayWay.com. And if you want more information just on what we talked about today, go to DrMarisol.com. We will put all of these links in the show notes. And thanks again for being here. We really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Awesome. My pleasure.